check this out i'll draw a head and shoulders pattern and hit next and see this we're automatically able to detect head and shoulders pattern let's try another pattern right i'll draw cup and handle pattern next see this we're automatically able to identify cup and handle cup and handle and let's try another pattern I'll draw falling wedge Hit next see this we're able to detect that so in this video i'm going to show you how we can use a vector store to identify chart patterns and candlestick data now we're not going to use any machine learning techniques or large language models to achieve this we're only going to use a vector store so that's going to make it extremely fast yet accurate and the best part of it is its general purpose so the implementation you do is not just specific to a particular pattern you can just implement this and you can try this on any if not most of the patterns and it should still work so this is very general purpose which which is what makes it so valuable in this video i'm going to break down each and every aspect of the implementation so stick around i'm sure you'll have a lot of new things and exciting things to learn first we'll start with a functional overview if you go to my website dkhub.com and scroll down you will have this card and if you hit dive in that will open up this terminal so you have a huge a trading view canvas across spread across the entire width and height and here i have a uh, 10000 bars approximately 10000 bars so this is just a uh, bitcoin candlestick data on one hour time frame in 2020 like 5 years ago all right and on the top right corner i have a subscribe button that points to my youtube channel and then on the left on the left you have drawn draw pattern so when you click this it opens up, it opens up this canvas where you can draw the desired pattern so i'll just draw a cup pattern and hit next and when you hit next it will start analyzing the candlestick data and map plot the patterns that fit this pattern all right if you hit clear you can redraw on the canvas hit next that's going to analyze the data and you also have this accuracy slider so if you increase the accuracy you will find fewer matching patterns but they will be more accurate but if you slide to the left then you'll find more results but the results could be you know less accurate so you can use accuracy to to filter out only the best matching patterns so let's try something else I, instead of cup i'll draw inverted uh, cup let's hit next i think i should increase the accuracy yeah you see this is an inverted cup here I have another inverted uh, cup pattern and yeah that's it that, that's about it so again it's free to use you can go to my website and hit dive in that will take you to this terminal and you can just play around with the patterns and see how accurate this is now let's break down the implementation part we'll start with the front end uh, implementation again I'm not going to go through each and every single line of code but I'll show you at a high level how everything is put together but I will discuss how I have implemented uh, the pattern recognition you know part of the functionality because that I think is the core of this entire project so we'll discuss those when we talk about the back-end side of the implementation so speaking of front-end side uh, I have used wheat and react to, to implement the front-end side of things and I also used Mantine because Mantine provides a lot of uh, components that I can reuse which makes it really easy to implement complex UIs so I, I prefer to use Mantine and then I used Axios to handle API calls and I also used lightweight charting library to, to plot the chart and also the patterns and I also used Redux toolkit to centrally manage the state and uh, Redux thunk to handle all the API calls so you can see on the left hand side you can see the folder structure and if I we only have a single page which is the home page and inside the home page we have a box that spans the entire width and height and then we have we have these buttons so we have the subscribe button and also the draw pattern button and uh, we also isolated the rest of the functionality into their own components like plotting the chart and also drawing the pattern uh, on the canvas so if you, here we have the accuracy slider and the chart is where you plot the candlestick data and also the lines and in the draw module draw component here is where we have 
this canvas where you draw the particular pattern all right and if you go to middleware under reducers you have only single slice which is the k line slice and this is where we'll hold centrally hold the entire state of the client side project so we have candlestick data we have the patterns and loading is to have an overlay whenever whenever an async or api call is made and then we have the accuracy and also you know the pattern that was drawn to show to store the state of the drawing and combined is where everything comes together so here is where we have different thunks that we implemented thunk is where you know we you handle an api call and we have the store which only contains a single slice which is the k lens sorry which only contains a single reducer which is k line reducer and we only have uh, two actions which is fetch k lines and fetch matching patterns because we only have two api calls and uh, that's what we use to dispatch actions from the components and update the state after the api call is processed and under the services you have axios to handle you know the api calls and here we don't have any authentication as such so it's going to be fairly straightforward and then under the notifications again we don't have any notifications so uh, most likely you won't, you won't see it we only have a few notifications but they only trigger when there is an error in the state so it's, it's a fairly simple maintained you know notifications module so when you dispatch a notifications that will be shown on the ui that's it uh, so that's the folder structure i've used and in the shell.jsx you can see i have used a dark color theme because you know uh, that's what i prefer and yeah that, that that's about it so this is how the client side things were handled again it looks like i've just went through different uh, packages that i used to implement but i want to focus on the core aspect of the implementation you know how this pattern recognition was implemented so i'll spend more time on how that was achieved all right now let's look at the back end side of the implementation so this these are all the parameters or i would say the configuration for the entire chart pattern recognition so i'll show you how this works so like i said i used a uh, bitcoin candlestick data for the year 2020 on the one hour time frame so if you do the math we have 24 bars every day 24 times 365 which is 8760 bars let's round it off to 10000 so what we do is we first take those 10000 bars and create a catalog of all the possible patterns all right so what we do is we start with a window size of 100 that is the starting window size and we create a sliding window and increment each window by step 10 so the way this works is we start with index 0 and take all the way up to 100 and then we shift that by 10 bars all right so we take from 10 to 110 and then 20 to 120 and do that over the entire data set so that should create roughly you know around thousand windows right so we take that windows and then we repeat the same thing by increasing the window size from 100 to 120 and again we increase by step size and we do another entire sweep and then we also increase and then we keep doing it until we reach a window size of 300 all right so we take all the windows ranging from st starting with 100 and all the way up to 300 and after we do a, do a single sweep we increase the window size by 20 and then each window we sweep it through the entire data set with a step size of 10 so that's how we create a catalog of all the patterns so once we identify all the patterns ranging from size of 100 to 300 we need to normalize these windows so if you go to once we identify all the windows we need to normalize the x-axis and y-axis so what we do is we need to normalize the x-axis and y-axis values between 0 and 100 because when we when we compare two vectors the y-axis and x-axis needs to be having the same range to produce accurate results so to do that we're going to normalize the x-axis and y-axis and store a catalog of all the possible patterns all right so I'm, I'm just going to show you an example so here is a pattern which is on the y-axis you can see the value is already valid normalized between 0 and 100 but the x-axis is ranging between 200 so we have 200 points to capture the shape of this pattern so we we reduce the number of points from 100 to 200 sorry from 200 to 100 so if you see here i reduce the count to 100 so the shape of the pattern is preserved but the y-axis and x-axis value is ranging between 0 and 100 so that's what we need to do and once you do that you're going to store create a catalog of all the patterns so that's going to be the baseline stack of all the patterns that we match against all right and then on the client side 
when a particular pattern is drawn right so when a particular pattern is drawn we need to normalize this pattern as well so here we need a greater degree of normalization let me explain so if you go to clip and normalize so here is where we're going to take this pattern that was drawn on the canvas and create it normalize it to make it comparable with the stack that we just created so here we need to do four levels of normalization the first thing is invert y-axis the first step of normalization is inverting y-axis so that's because here right if you look at the comparable patterns you can see the y-axis is starting from the bottom left corner and goes all the way up to the top left corner so but but here when you draw something on the canvas the y-axis starts from top left corner and goes all the way down to bottom left corner so the y-axis here goes from bottom to top right that in, in the stack that we created but the y-axis here goes from top to bottom so we need to invert the y-axis first to make it comparable so the first step is to invert y-axis and then the second step is to remove duplicate x value so when you draw a pattern it's going to capture all the point all the points while you're making the drawing and while you make this drawing you can have like for the same x axis you can have multiple y values so we need to get rid of those so the second step is to remove duplicate x axis values and the third step is to normalize y axis so when you draw this pattern again we take the highest value and the lowest value and then we normalize the y axis squish the values between 0 and 100 and then we do the same thing normalize x axis we squish the value between 0 and 100 so that produces a pattern that is comparable with the stack that we just created and then finally we use a vector store to make the comparison and return the results and once we return the pattern we're going to remove any overlapping pattern so think about it so when we created the initial stack we took all the patterns ranging between size 100 and 300 so there will be some degree of overlap on a few patterns especially when there is a match so here we're going to get rid of overlapping patterns and only select the best quality pattern when there is an overlap all right so that is going to give you the results and finally once we get the results we're going to plot on the ui it's just a line taking the closing prices again you start to appreciate the simplicity of this technique when you understand how complex it is to implement something of this sort using traditional approach think about it let's say you're drawing a head and shoulders pattern right uh, if you were to do it with traditional techniques you would do something like first taking all the pivot points and then you would say you know uh, pivot point i is higher than pivot point i minus 10 or you know pivot and then you know and you have to do a lot of if conditions and while loops which still have which still may not be accurate right and the worst thing is you have to write a different set of code to different patterns right so that is really not a scalable way and not an accurate way again if you if you did this before you would understand the complexity of it so it's not really scalable and it won't be accurate and this is where a vector database can be really handy you can just you just have to code it once and it it's general purpose it works for all the patterns which like i said you know if you understand the complexity of it you start to appreciate the simplicity of doing this with a vector database now let's talk about possible optimization so if you look at constants or j so this is the configuration for uh, you know the pattern recognition uh, m and e of construction right so these two are the parameters that that uh, decide you know how accurate the analysis is is so for 10000 bars i found 16 and 200 to be you know the perfect balance between speed and accuracy but uh, again the higher these values you will achieve a greater degree of accuracy but you would also end up using more ram and uh, more time to process so find a balance play with different values and then you'll understand you know what what best fits your requirement and the second thing is variable window so i could have just used a single window size but think about it so let's say a pattern is occurring let's say you have a head and shoulders pattern that is occurring do you think it's going to always occur over a time frame of 100 bars no right so you would uh, that's not how things really work right in in the real world right so in the real world you cannot just have a fixed size of window and expect the pattern to only occur in this window so you should have something dynamic which is why i chose a value between 100 and 300 and took all the possible patterns and find the best match but while you are in the fine tuning phase you might also want a greater degree of uh, flexibility to choose your own values so maybe if this video is well received i will add more controls to the ui so that you can fine tune you know 
this algorithm to detect the patterns that you want. That's about it in this video. Like I said, it's free to use. You can go to my website and click on this card to start trying it out. And like I said, if the video is well received, I will make more videos on this topic and also add more controls to the slider. And this is how I intend to use, right? You need to combine traditional techniques and also pattern recognition to achieve the best results. That's what I think. And you can extend this concept to beyond chart patterns, right? If you can combine multiple time frames and combine multiple values, like in like if you use Ichimoku toolkit, right? You have the Tenkin, Kijun, and the cloud values. So what if you want to combine multiple lines while of conducting the pattern recognition? So these are different areas that I want to explore. But let's see. I mean, I don't know how many of you are interested in this topic. So depending on that, I'll decide whether it's worth making more videos on this topic. That's about it. Leave your thoughts in the comment section and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.